Hey guys, it's Greg Jones for Engine Builder. We are in Mooresville, North Carolina today at Harrell Engine and Dyno, and I'm joined by Pete Harrell. And this right here is a 540 cubic inch billet big block Chevy, and it's our engine of the week. Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pen Grade One, L Ring DOS Original, and NPW. All right, Pete, well, thanks so much for giving us a little time to chat about another engine that you got in the works here. This one's a billet big block Chevy, uh, and I understand it's for a drag and drive uh, racer. Yeah, this is for uh, a drag and drive type deal. I don't know if this guy's going to run the like thousand mile type stuff. He kind of wants to be able to limp into town and that kind of thing. And uh, so it, if you'll notice the block has water passages. Yeah. It's not a plated block. So I don't know how it would do. And if you're pulling a trailer a thousand miles, right. but he can definitely cruise it around town a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the drag and drive stuff's gotten pretty big lately. And uh, you're seeing more and more guys want to up the ante uh, with what they've got, uh, which is which is always cool. and. This is definitely up in the ante with the billet block, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so specifically, do you know you know what what the billet block is from? And yeah, this is a CN block. Okay. Um, we've actually used quite a bit, few of these in in the past. Yeah. Um, it's a skirted block, which I kind of prefer. There's pluses and minuses to each of these, but um, they're definitely super strong. Yeah. And they kind of make putting an oil pan on really simple. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they have their pluses. The, the downside is if you kick the rods out, you can tear more stuff up. Sure. Or if you have a regular, a regular block, there's just pan here, you know, right. but yeah. they're definitely super strong. So they got, they got their advantages. Yeah. Now the, the CM blocks are, are really gorgeous as, as we can see. Uh, now, obviously we got the rotating assembly exposed here. Do you want to talk a little bit about you know, what's going on there? Yeah. So obviously it's billet crank. Uh, this one's, four and a quarter stroke, which okay. is what we run on uh, a lot of the turbo stuff. Um, in this case, it's got a Bill Miller uh, aluminum rod and a Bill Miller piston, mm -hmm. um, but it's built for, you know, big power, but also can limp it around town some. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, give them that range of versatility, right? Exactly. Now, obviously this is still being built up and, you know, it's not the, it's just kind of a short block form at the moment, but you know what else is going to ultimately go on this on this build? Well, this one uses a conventional style head, okay. um, uh, so it's you know it, that kind of brings the price down a little bit. I don't know if that matters when you're talking about billet blocks. Sure. sure. But in this case, it's a it's a conventional style head, okay. and uh, I don't exactly know what direction this particular customer is going with the intake manifold yet, mm -hmm. but. Usually we're going to end up with some kind of a sheet metal deal or nowadays the sheet metal is kind of going by the wayside for either billet or kind of the hybrid stuff. It, right. It's rare you see a, just a complete sheet metal deal anymore. Right. You know? right. Absolutely. Um, and then do you know any of uh, the valve train type components that they might be running? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, usually they'll have my camshaft okay. uh, and we primarily use a combination of T and D and Jessel. Okay. Uh, I don't remember exactly which one's on this one. Okay. But uh, I'm gonna use, we use, uh, we, a lot of times we use a BAM lifter. Um, they're great. Sometimes we use a Jessel, it kind of depends on the application. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we almost always use a Manton push rod. Okay. And, uh, and something like this, the, they're uh, just a little bit short of a Louis, Louisville Slugger baseball bat. <laughs> right, right. Kind of massive. Yeah, yeah, pretty thick push rod there. Yep. Um, and then, will this customer be running any type of boost? You know, is he gonna yep, be this one is, uh, or... it'll be a turbo deal. Okay. Um, twins. And uh, uh, when he when he runs at the racetrack, at least, it'll be on methanol. Okay. Know? And uh, which most of the big power stuff, but they're on methanol. Yeah, flip know? between the, the race gas and then pump gas on the street. Right. Very cool. And then, uh, does this customer have a horsepower goal or an ET goal that you're kind of striving for? Or? You know, he just wants to go as fast as he can and yeah. we kind of, we'll help him with that because we do a lot of tuning here, you yeah. know. Um, but uh, something like this, it's it's r really easy to make 3,500 plus wow. real horsepower, wow. you know. Um, yeah. 
it's it's not much of a trick at all nowadays. The turbos are just unreal these days. Yeah. You kind of have to hold them back, you know, because right. you can you can tear some stuff up pretty quick. If yeah. You... Yeah, for sure. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Pete, anything else that we're leaving out about you know what this build is ultimately going to be? No, that's the 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 basics of it. Yeah. I'd cool. say other than being billet and shiny, it's nothing really complicated. Right. Same principle. Right. You know? Absolutely. Well, Pete, thanks for walking us through this uh, 540 cubic inch billet big block Chevy. Guys, that's been this episode of Engine of the Week. We appreciate you watching. Make sure you're checking out everything that Pete's doing here at Harrell Engine and Dyno. And as always, make sure you're checking out Engine Builder on our website and across social media. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.